In this lesson, we'll talk about compound interest. So, for this particular course, we're only going to focus on interest that's compounded annually or continuously. And so, the way that compound interest works is we have in some sort of initial deposit that we're putting into the bank or, or whatever type of account it is, and you have an interest rate that we usually have as a yearly interest rate, and we write this as a decimal. And then we want to calculate, well, what is the balance after t years? So, when compounded annually, we have this formula, which basically just says add the interest on at the end of each year. And this interest is compounded on top of the interest from before. And then if the interest is compounded continuously, basically saying that the interest is compounded every second or, or even faster if you want to consider it that way, we use this formula to generate how much money will be remaining in the account. You'll find that this formula tends to create a slightly higher balance than this formula. So, there's also a formula for doing this more than just continuously and annually. Of course, there's things in between such as monthly, daily, etc. But we're not going to be doing that in this class. So, let's do an example. We've got the bank advertising an interest rate of 3% per year. So if we want to deposit $5,000 in the bank, we want to know how much is going to be in the account two years later. So 3% per year is a pretty good interest rate. That's the amount that you might be able to get out of a, a special deposit, but generally speaking, that's a lot higher than you would get out of a normal savings account. So if we're depositing the money annually, the formula again is P equals P0, which is 5,000, and then 1 plus the interest rate, which we'll write as a decimal, to the number of years. And so to put this in our calculator, we're just going to add it up first and see what we get. When I do this, I get $5,304 and 50 cents. All right, if we're compounding continuously, the formula is 5,000 e to the r t. So we're going to need to plug into our calculator 5,000 e to the 0 0.06. You can also do this part at once, but just be careful to make sure that it's all in parentheses. When I do this, I get about $5,309.18. So you'll notice that number is just a little bit larger. And that's generally the case for continuous compounding, is that the numbers are going to be higher, but not tremendously higher than if you were to do annual compounding. All right, so we usually call this future value. We give an amount of where we're starting and we look at what the amount will be when we finish. Let's look at another example. So we have $10,000 deposited in an account for 2% per year, this time compounded continuously, and we want to know how long does it take for the account to double. So let me just write down the full equation for a moment. So here's our continuous compounding. Now we're wanting to know how long it takes for the balance to double. So that means that we're going to plug in double as our future value. And so that is going to be $20,000. The P0 will be $10,000. And the interest rate is 0 0.02. And we don't know the time. That's what we're solving for. So let's solve this equation. So we'll start out by dividing by 10,000. And so we get 2 equals e to the 0 0.02t. And by the way, this 2 is actually kind of interesting. We were just doing a problem with doubling, right? Well, it turns out that if you were to just pick any amount that you want to, you're still going to get a 2 here. So how much is deposited is actually irrelevant. The doubling time is independent of this starting amount. Anyway, now that we have this exponential term, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And you'll notice because this is an e, 
we can cancel these out and we're going to get the natural log of 2 is equal to 0 0.02t. Divide by 0 0.02 and we see that t is going to equal the natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.02 which is approximately 34.66 years. So 2% takes a long time to double the money. That's why we try to find ways to make higher interest rates than just something like 2%. Last example, this is something that we call present value. So let's say that you are trying to figure out how much to put into the bank now in order for the savings amount to raise to $10,000 when you graduate in four years. So we need to figure out, well, how much could we put in now and then have $10,000 to make a down payment four years in the future? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the same equation, but this time we're using annual interest. So let's write that equation down. We get P equals P0 times 1 plus R to the T. And now we're told the 10,000 is what we want in the future. So I'm going to put that in for P, the future value. P0 is what I don't know. That's what I need to put in now. Then R is my interest rate, 0 0.015. And T is four years. So let's just simplify this a little bit. So we have 1.015 to the fourth power. And I could calculate this now, but let me go ahead and divide both sides by this value. All right, and then that leaves us with P0 is equal to 10,000 divided by 1.015 to the fourth power. And I get that this is approximately 9,000 four hundred twenty one dollars and eighty four cents so at an interest rate of only one point five percent interest annually you needing ten thousand in the future means you need to have almost all of it right now and that's a little bit hard to do